general relativity step by step. A couple of people have complained that the last um, screencast was a bit fast and I uh, and I just uh, gave the Ricci tensor with no introduction. So I'm going to I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about what the Ricci tensor is uh, and basically justify my decision to use uh, Maxima rather than calculating all the components by hand. Um, yeah, so uh, I've got a list here. Uh, just a minute. I need to do that and that. I've got a list here of all the non-zero Riemann Christoffel uh, sorry, the Christoffel symbols of the second kind, all the non-zero ones that Maxima gave me if I scroll back up to this calculation here. And all I've done is just gone through them one by one and just copied them out in a more uh, civilised and human type notation. So we've got we've got quite a few of these guys here. Um, so we've got the Riemann Christoffel tensor, which, well, I want to evaluate the uh, Ricci tensor, which is a contraction of the Riemann Christoffel uh, mu and then that's alpha and nu. That's the Riemann, the left hand, no, that's the right hand side is the re. Mm. This thing here is the Riemann Christoffel curvature tensor. Christoffel curvature. And it's discussed in great detail in general relativity step by step. 55 through 58 inclusive, which talks about the mathematics, and GRSS 114 through 138, which talk about the physics. This is a non-trivial physical concept. So if you want to revise what the riemann christoffel curvature tensor is and what its physical significance is, um, you, you've got these resources here available too. Okay, so I'm just going to delete that delete that and I'm going to I'm going to evaluate the Riemann Christoffel uh, curvature tensor whoo, in a couple of different ways. well I'm going to do a couple of different um, couple of different uh, components of it the first one I'm going to do is I'll pinch in a little tiny bit the first one I'm going to do is R and then T T T T so it's all the T's um, yeah so let me just remind myself what the Riemann Christoffel curvature tensor is. R mu alpha beta gamma equals di by di x beta Christoffel mu alpha gamma minus di di x gamma Riemann mu sorry that's that's Christoffel symbol alpha beta. Minute, get myself uh, a bit tangled up here. Plus R mu sigma beta sigma gamma alpha minus the other term mu sigma gamma sigma beta alpha. Right, so what does, it, does that tell us? That tells us that R t t t t, which is the one I want to evaluate is equal to, well, when I'm doing this, now I know that mu equals this one, this one, this one, this one, equals alpha, equals beta, equals gamma, equals the time, uh, the time coordinate. So I can just make a whole bunch of substitutions. Di by di t of t t t minus di by di t. You see, I can just substitute the gamma for a t directly. I know that every subscript and every superscript, certainly in these two terms here, is equal to a time. Ha ha! So, what, right, now we know that this term and this term cancel out, because whatever they are, doesn't matter if the Christoffel uh, symbol there is zero or not. I think it is zero as it happens, because it's, it's not on my list here. But whatever it is, and I think it's zero, but even if it wasn't, these two terms would cancel out. Now these cross terms here are a little bit harder because there's a summation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write it out in a sort of in a sort of hybrid notation, I guess. Oh no, that's not that's not a beta, that's a t. See how difficult it is. So I'm copying out that's mu, sigma is a summation variable, and beta is there. 
and then that is sigma tt for this term here. I'll write that out in a different colour. That's that term is this term here and then this term is going to be written here back to black minus t t oh no sigma t sigma t t yes and if i go to the red pen now you can see that this term and this term cancel because even after you've summed across sigma um they're the same term you see it's t sigma t t sigma t sigma t t sigma t t and so these terms separately cancel so what have we learned from this process we have learned that the riemann ooh, we have learned that the riemann christoffel tensor r t t t t is identically equal to zero for the test metric that we are considering. Whew, that's quite uh, quite difficult. It's reassuring in a way that just a, it's not quite a randomly chosen uh, element of the Christ Riemann Christoffel curvature tensor. Um, it's not quite a randomly chosen one, but it's just a, an arbitrary one, which just happens to be zero. And again, this is a feature of a sensibly chosen coordinate system on a symmetric space. We are exploiting the symmetry of the space in the coordinate system by choosing a coordinate system in which the majority or a large number of the curvature, the elements of the curvature tensor are zero. And, and here we go, that's a zero, which is quite nice. I'm going to do another component here as well. Um, yeah, let's see if I can do this. I'm going to evaluate R. Now, which one did I choose? Let's try R, T, T, R equals what? Well, from this formula here, now what have I got? Instead of this restriction, now, now my restriction is, I'm going to write it here. Alpha equals R because it's this. Oh no, that's a mu. Mu equals R. The next one's an alpha, which is a T. The next one's beta, which is also a T. And the final one is gamma, which is equal to R. So what I'm going to do is to write this formula down here, but making these substitutions in here. I'm also going to leave, again, the sigma free to sum over. Right, so it's die by die, just copying from this formula, beta is equal to t, Christoffel, mu was equal to r, alpha was equal to t, gamma was equal to r, I think that's non-zero, but we'll come back to that one, minus die by die, gamma, r, Christoffel symbol, mu, which was r, alpha beta, which was tt. And what I'm going to do, I'll do the cross terms. Uh, I'll do the cross terms next. But when I finish those, I'm going to look at my list, which I wrote down, which I copied from Maxima. Remember that list was quite difficult to calculate. Uh, and now make substitutions. Plus. Christoffel R and then Sigma is free so we're summing over Sigma still <sighs> beta was equal to T Sigma oh that's the summation variable gamma was this one which is R alpha was this one which was T minus now it's this one Mu was R, sig R, sigma was equal, was the summation variable, gamma was what? R, sigma is the summation variable, beta alpha, beta alpha, beta alpha, that's TT.
Okay, can we do any cancelling? There's no obvious cancellation here. Um, what I'm going to do is try and identify my Riemann Christoffel uh, symbol. So let's have a look at this one. This one is R and then TR. And of course it's symmetrical in the lower two indices. So it's R, TR. Let's just have a look at that. Oh, it's here. It's this one here. Look, R and then RT. A dot over A. So it's equal to die by die T of A dot over A minus die by die R of Christoffel RTT. Have I got that on my list? Yes, I have. I've got it here, you see? A, A dot. Well, actually, I can save myself a little bit of time because these are just functions of time. So that term zero. Be grateful for small mercies. Right, now let's have a look at the next one. Plus, now we've got to expand that, um, expand that, uh, expand these terms here. So, well, well, I may as well just do it all R and then T, T, T. You see, this is sigma equals T and then T, R, T plus R, R, T. <clears throat> Sorry about that, I had a little glitch, I had to let the, let the cat in. Uh, where was I? I was summing up sigma here, and so this was the sigma equals t term. This one's sigma equals r, and then of course I've got sigma equals theta, and the bottom one will be sigma equals phi. It's a plus. This term sigma equals r. R, T. Oh, I know what I should do. What I should do is write the skeleton in, which is R something T, something R, T. And then here, we've got R something T, something R, T. And the something is theta and sigma. Well, that might save me a little bit of time. Minus, minus, minus minus all these terms are minus because I'm expanding this term here according to the same schedule so I'm going to use the same trick I'm going to say r something r uh, something t t and that's the same it's going to have the same skeleton there that's t r theta and the bottom one will be phi let's get rid of those again r something r something t t I'm just copying from the one above it R something R something T T. This one, R something R something T T. And now I fill the something in. T from here. It's R from there. Theta from there. And phi from there. Right. Okay. So let's have a look at this. What um, what have we got left? Let me just have a look at my list. Well, let's have a look at this one here. RTT is non-zero, but I think TRT is zero. I think it's zero. It's difficult to be sure. Yes, look, we've got an RRT, but we haven't got any... I don't think we've got any terms at all with T on the top, except for theta, theta, phi, phi. Yeah. So, this term here is equal to zero. Well, that's good news. Junk. Dead. Right, R, R, T. Let me go back to black. This one's R, R, T. Have I got that on my list? Yes, I have. It's A dot over A. So this term here is A dot over A squared. And I'll switch over to green and I'll tick that one that we've done. We've done this one. What about this one? R, I better go back to black. R, theta, T. I don't think that's a... R theta T, R at the top. Nope, that's a zero term. That's nice. So let's cross that one out. Gion, good riddance. And I've just realised I've written a sigma there, and that should have been a phi. Oops, red. That should have been a phi. Well, let's see. R phi t. Is that on my list anywhere? R phi t. No, I don't think it is. 
No, it's not on my list. So that's a zero as well. Cancel that one out. Good riddance. Right, let's do some of these other terms. Did I go back to black? Yeah. R, T, R, which we know to be zero, but T, T, T is zero. So this disappears, which is nice. What about this one? R, R, R. Was that on my list? Mm, no, that wasn't on my list. So that's a zero. Oops. Cancelling out. This one, R, theta, R. Let's have a look at that. R, theta, R. Hmm. Dong, 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 R, dong, dong, R, theta, R. No, that's not on my list. So this one's a zero as well. Goodbye. And this one's R, phi, R. Which is, again, not on my list. It's not on the list. Gone. Oops, that's black. Go over to red. Right, so only one of the terms, this one with the green arrow, managed to survive. So we've got a nice little result here that this component, I think I wrote it down there, and this equals R, riemann christoffel curvature tensor, R, T, T, R. All right. Take-home message is not, this is the component of the riemann christoffel curvature tensor. Take-home message is, it's a pain in the arse to evaluate. I've got very little confidence that I've got it right. There's a lot of terms here. I'm having to flick backwards and forwards to my list. It would be easier if I wasn't working in this small area on a um, on my tablet, if I was working on a nice big piece of paper. Um, but even so, this is a, a complicated, difficult, thankless task. And that's the take-home message. The other thing to point out is that R mu nu is actually a sum over alpha of R alpha mu alpha nu equals one to four so each one of these terms here has got buried inside it a sum of four riemann christoffel curvature tensors and each one of those is a pain in the neck to evaluate so let me just go through that whole process for you in computer algebra and here we've got the ricci tensor the four non-zero components of the Ricci tensor nicely, clearly written out for us in front of us, which is much, much nicer. I've got a lot of confidence that they're right, and I've got very little confidence that my calculations are right. So I'm going to stop there. Stop, 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 stop. stop.